Are you curious about what yoga looks like off the mat or keen to hear how yogis all around the world live? This show will let you in on the secret that there's no such thing as a perfect yogi. Welcome to the Plant Powered Yoga Podcast. Please welcome your host, yoga teacher, coffee lover, vegan, and known as the Plant Powered Yogi, Jess Ivers. Hello, yogis, and happy new year. Welcome to 2021. We made it through 2020. Congratulations on making it through. I am super thrilled to bring you another chat this week with someone that uh, was a positive part of my 2020, Claire Cunning from Chair Yoga uh, Australia. I did my Chair Yoga Teacher Training online uh, with Claire in the later half of 2020 when I was wanting to add a little more to my skill set and try something a little bit different and it was a real eye-opener into how to make yoga more accessible. Claire and I go into a little bit of detail about what chair yoga is and how it's practiced and the terms of accessibility that I guess belong in yoga and the way that it's been developed. Um, So looking forward to sharing this with you. Enjoy. Hope you're listening to this somewhere, hopefully relaxing, getting some time off over your summer break here in Australia. All right. Welcome to the podcast, Claire Canine, joining me from Sydney today. How are you? I'm good. Thanks, Jess. Nice to be here. Lovely to have you on the podcast. Now, um, for those who don't know Claire, Claire is a chair yoga teacher here in Australia and I just recently completed my, uh, was it 32 hours um, of chair yoga teacher training with Claire. Um, So very happy to, one, have finished that and B, um, have met Claire along the way. Um, Tell us a little bit bit about yourself, Claire. Chair yoga, yoga, where did it all begin? Well, my teaching career began in the late 90s as a aerobics instructor. So if you think back to aerobics or style around that time, um, and we used to teach aerobics in the gym and did some personal training, things like that. And over the years, I started to teach uh, seniors quite often. And then I came across Zumba, I began to teach Zumba. And it was through actually my Zumba Gold class for my seniors that I came to chair yoga. So one day we were just finishing off our class and I just did three breaths with them and everyone in the whole class just went <sighs> at the same time. And I just had one of those light bulb moments. I need to do yoga with them. And I wasn't a yoga teacher yet because um, I was too scared to do a yoga training, thinking that I wasn't good enough, that I wasn't flexible enough. All of the things that I hear people say to me about yoga um, was what I was experiencing as well. And so I found this course. There was nothing really in Australia. And I found this course in New York. And I was like, well, who doesn't want to go to New York, hey? So (laughs) jumped on a plane and went over to New York and did the chair yoga teacher training and then ended up um, coming back and teaching classes. That was in 2014. And... I really um, saw a need for more of it here and there really wasn't anyone else really doing that. So I was trying to get the people who wrote the course, Lakshmi and Bruce, to come over and do the training, but they ended up asking me if I'd like to be a trainer with them. So that's how I began teaching the teachers then here in the Southern Hemisphere. So cool. You became like the little, uh, yeah, Southern Hemisphere yeah little negotiation (laughs) or like go between between the course and (laughs) yeah but it's great because the online option I've actually trained people from everywhere like Japan and the UK and Ireland and uh, even the US like yeah it's just been awesome to have that option to visit the world without even leaving home (laughs) well especially this year when uh, leaving home has a been you know in some places uh, very frowned upon and also Japan seems like a very far away place right now. <laughs> I know. I know. I actually did a workshop for this um, 
Japanese yoga studio, which was interesting because originally my plan was to go there and do the teacher training, but uh, maybe it will turn into an online virtual classroom instead. You know, there's there's options like that now, which we're exploring and um, adapting to because uh, travel, we don't know how long, you know, internationally as well, um, how long that's going to be. But yeah, hopefully not too long. <laughs> Depends so. calling my name. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's written in there somewhere put it on put that on your vision board we were oh yeah we <laughs> about um vision boards and how claire had written the podcasting up there so you know here we are it's like you know things come true. true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah definitely a few things i put on there comes true so I, if you're ever feeling like you just are a little bit stuck a little bit flat a little bit like things aren't rolling i highly suggest just writing it down or putting it up in front of you or just printing something out, being specific about what you want and yeah, allowing it to come to you. And every day, like put a little bit of energy towards it. And um, it's amazing what will happen. Yeah. I yeah. love that. I, I don't know if I've spoken to you about this, but I've, you know, a lot of yoga is about sort of like manifestation and visualizing and, and, you know, seeing yourself in certain things and, I think I, I didn't realize until recently, I was like, I've always done that. It wasn't necessarily the something that just became, became as a yogi, but I was like, oh, I feel like I've always been someone like, you know, I don't necessarily have a vision board per se at the moment, but at the moment I've got, you know, pictures up on, on a wall of, um, you know, like my cats and, and Melbourne and places that I've traveled and things that mean a lot to me and, and make me happy. And, you know, it's like if I'm away from them or, you know, places I want to go, friends I want to see, it sort of gives me, I guess a little bit of something to look forward to and um mm -hmm. although i have been getting into some like uh, visualization cards of late um i've got a couple dotted up around my room at the moment and some on my mirror um in the bathroom so just the bathroom a mirror thing. that's a good place to put stuff isn't it because yeah. <laughs> yeah. you see it all the time so it's the more that you look at it the more that you know i mean you can see affirmations you can Matt asks for something, whatever, but if you don't put energy behind it and, yes. and or in, embody it into your body, like if you do, like, you know, when we do sitting mountain in chair yoga mm. and we have the affirmation, I am the mountain, I'm strong, stable, solid, secure, whatever words you want to say, we can just say the words without any action behind it, without any energy into it, but they're not going to be as effective as if we embody that mountain position, if we like go, here we are as the mountain, you know, and then say it, that's just going to have such a more profound effect. So every time you look at that, you're putting energy towards it. So every time you go and brush your teeth, you might even just glance at it without thinking too much, but you're going to see that and you're going to go, okay, like those words, that um, affirmation goes into you, that visualization. So yeah. 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 And I think powerful. I'd say that there'd be a lot of yogis out there that would be quite visual people um, in, in terms of that. So, yeah, I think so. I think there's all types of yogis out there. <laughs> well, there's lots of different types of yogis out there, which, uh, which we'll talk about in a moment. But um, going from aerobics and Zumba to yoga, how did that sort of come about? Because I feel like they're very different things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They are and they aren't. Like, I think that, yeah. Um, I mean, I think you can teach fitness in a holistic way as well, I suppose. And like learning more about yoga has actually, I think, made me a better teacher in um, all the other things that I teach as well. But uh, yeah, it's, it is slightly, I mean, I'm a Gemini, so you know, jack of all trades, right? <laughs> and I also like to learn lots of different things because it keeps me inspired. And I always taught lots of different classes, um, you know, from spin to Zumba to Pilates to, to everything. But coming out of um, like 15 years of thrashing my body with um, high impact classes and working on injuries and things like that, um, moving more into the yoga world where I started to learn about not pushing myself through things. Although my beginning experiences weren't like that because it was the type of classes that I was going to, the teachers that didn't really allow for um, 
different bodies, injuries, uh, things like that that I was working with. So um, that's why I was a bit scared to go to a training because I felt like I would need to perform and I would need to be really flexy and like do all of those um, poses when my hips were really tight from all the cycle classes that I did and the lower back injuries I've had and things like that. So, you know, it was impossible for my body to get into those shapes. Um, and in, and the, in my experience, I hadn't had opportunities with any different options. So, uh, you know, so doing the chi yoga actually um, gave me personally permission to go and do that course and just be me. And I'm okay with that, you know. I can be wherever I want at any time, whenever I turn up to the chair, to the mat. I can just be me. And that was a ma massive lesson I took away from that course. Um, and, yeah, surprisingly enough, when I got home, I think it was, like, literally that week or something. It was my birthday, I think. And um, the guy from the studio that I was going to one class, a candle, a beautiful candle, yoga, which was... Wow already been gorgeous and that not like the other experiences <laughs> um and it was slow which was good uh and he rang me is like we're doing this teacher training i think you should come and i was like hang on i've got to think about this and i hung up and then i immediately rang him back and said okay i'm going so it was just like and it ended up being a really good training and what i found was i could actually use myself as a learning tool for everyone else because um i could be the you know the option that needed the person that needed the adjustments and show people how to use props and different, um, different things. So yeah, it actually was helpful for people, which was not really what I expected about doing a training, but, um, yeah. So yeah, so it just came into yoga from there. And then I studied after that yoga therapy because I wanted to really work more, um, with looking at like individuals and um yeah as well i love the group training as well but having that training really helps with understanding people as individuals even in a group space as well mm. so yeah so and, and uh, you said you were the the kind of the body on the training that was like the one that needed a bit more accessibility and stuff because i i wonder if you know if you weren't there whether that would have happened yeah i mean most of the other people in the course were most of them were um you know pretty able-bodied pretty um young i think even younger than me like maybe most of them were probably in their 20s i was in my 30s when i did that um and yeah it makes a difference the age makes a difference the body shape makes a difference like most of them were skinny uh, I know, like nothing against that, but it does really make a difference when you're getting into shapes and things, and it's not considered in many classes, um, mm. especially if the teacher is lacking experience in that body or with people in the class that have different bodies like that. So, you know, it's, um, yeah, it's just, it was, it was probably helpful for them. Well, at least I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> I hope I was doing some good. <laughs> just, yeah. I I'm sure you were. You've just reminded me, actually, the um, teacher training I did um, in Bali, I think they mentioned that on their 300-hour teacher training that they actually do that, which I, I mean, this was a couple of years ago, so I was quite, you know, in terms of the accessibility was was quite new to that side of things as well. But they, I think, said that they will get the teachers to put on um weights or clothes or things so that like they know how it feels to be in a bigger body yeah and it's so important and i think what happens is that people in a in bigger bodies like tend to go to yoga classes but because the teacher doesn't give them any options or anything they just don't go back and that has like two effects it means that the person who went to the class is being excluded and feels uncomfortable and feels probably not you know, great about themselves and probably never goes back to yoga because they've had that experience. They're like, I can't do yoga. That's the outcome. And also for the teacher, then they're not really getting a chance because if that person could find, could come back, maybe they could find an opportunity to learn as well about that. But, but yeah, that, that training really isn't there in many cases, um, not just with larger bodies, but any kind of different, um, different yeah and yeah it's not it's not really included in many trainings so it's really great to hear that that 
that is included, especially given that most of our population have boobs and have like, as in the yoga population, there's a lot more men coming to it too, but men have their own challenges as well um, in their bodies. But like most people are, are like in a normal shape body, you know, it's like not, um, not always going to be thin. And, um, and like sometimes so, lying so, in your tummy and lying down on your belly isn't super comfortable <laughs> in a yoga class. Um, yeah, that's right. And like bellies, you know, if you have a belly or anything like yeah. that, you've got to make considerations for this. And it's not bad to have that. That's normal. And I think that that's like, it's bizarre that we're not, offering things that are actually for just like everyone like normal people you know (laughs) like so anybody literally but literally anybody like whatever shape it's in because also like you know things would be crushed (laughs) like (laughs) long arms long legs short legs short, short arms can have a big effect on things short torsos long torsos and you know it's um different types of bodies have better opportunities like for example if you've got long arms it's much easier to do arm balances and things like that if you've got um long legs on the chair maybe some things are uncomfortable when you bring your knee down towards the floor maybe your knees on the ground so you might need extra height like there's all these things to consider about um how people feel in their practice and yeah it's just not it's not enough um maybe it's not even enough time in a 200 hour to get through all that, but there's also not, it's just not being offered that much as a, a part of the training, even with the type of people that go to training as well. Mm. Like I was saying, the type of the go to classes because other people like me, I felt like I wouldn't be good enough to go there. So I probably would have just never gone if I'd never done this course first. And then, you know, a lot of people probably in the same situation. So you get, a certain demographic in the trainings as well and then that doesn't really the teachers probably don't think about creating that experience yeah. of putting more clothes on or, or trying different things so yeah yeah it's, it's just like it kind of ends up being a cycle I suppose doesn't it of like yeah I hope that 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 side of things is, is starting to change and I don't know I feel like I mean, maybe it's just that I've become a bit more involved in trying to find more say accessible options for things but I'm seeing a lot more now but yeah I hope I hope that will start to change and I think you know it's going to get to a point where in terms of like population wise and and the people that you're offering classes and things to you're going to have to adapt and and change things and um yeah I guess especially after this year in terms of like what people have gone through adapting public uh spaces and things uh is going to be a big big thing yeah well most of our population is going to be older soon so like the biggest um, percentage of our population so you're gonna have to adapt or you're gonna miss out on work basically (laughs) like you you know so I think um but also we I mean we age our bodies change as well that's when I find a lot of people start looking into other options and you Mm. know um into things that are kinder to themselves and and you know your yoga practice and your yoga teaching can change with you as you go which is the beauty of it never has to be the same ever so you know um so yeah so that's really really good but chair yoga is a way to like really have something that is for everyone because there's no one who can't really do chair yoga sometimes but but even like the teachings of 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 chair yoga that we teach can be applied to bed yoga they can be applied to like situations where you know where people are in bed bed ridden and um i don't like that word ridden but anyway it sounds like it doesn't it when you think about it (laughs) just uh, living in bed maybe is another way to put that but um yeah, it's bedridden sounds really like rock normal. <laughs> anyway, I just like, sorry, I think about language a lot. But um No, yeah, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> um you know, but all of these teachings can be applied to um any situation really. They don't even if they're but most people sit. I mean most people sit. So yeah. and to some degree in a bed um you can create a seat by pillows and things like that if if that's okay and comfortable for the person Mm. but even if it's not you can still practice Um, yeah exactly now 
whenever I've told someone that I'm doing, that I was doing my chair yoga teacher training, they were like, uh, what is that? And they were really like, some people had just never heard of it or just, you know, if it was someone that was like, oh, I'm not really into yoga anyway. So like what, like one, what's the difference of it be like, what? Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, how, how do you do yoga on a chair? If you were to, to kind of sum that up in a, in a, in a sentence or two, um, how would you describe yes. it? Well, basically chair yoga. Um, I mean, we teach um, in LV chair yoga with the chair being part of the body, basically. So it's not a prop. It's actually part of the practice. It's a bit different from doing like standing poses where you're using the chair as a balance, for example. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it actually just it takes all of the traditional mat yoga that's practiced on the floor to the chair so it's accessible for everybody. So anything they can do on the mat, you can do it on the chair. But what I love about the chair is that there's so many more options for people because like within say warrior two pose, you have like endless options that, so then everyone can be, doing something nobody's ever left out there's always an option for someone in the class that they can all be there at the same time as well which is really beautiful but yeah so it is yoga it's still yoga it's just practice on a chair yeah <laughs> it's the easiest way to put it i guess <laughs> yoga on a chair <laughs> yeah right yeah and now one of the things that i think i and i'm, I'm sure a few people have struggled with this over doing their training is that the shapes on a chair will look well you know can look quite different to the shapes on a mat um and that was you know I think when I was doing it and I chose the reverse trikonasana to do as you yeah. know, one of my shapes and I was like gosh this looks so different doing it on a chair and so is that you know how hard is that to kind of get your head around when yeah you know there is this traditional way of, of thinking that oh a shape should look this way um and then when you take it onto the chair that you know kind of which you know I sort of say in in a mat yoga class anyway but I think you were quite open about this that it's not necessarily the, the way that it looks it's how it feels yeah yeah because those shapes are, are like uh, the postures are sort of a pathway to the yoga I think so you know and the yoga goes so much further than just postures and just shapes on a um on a mat but that's a side note but like yeah definitely <laughs> I mean looking I mean it's part of it as well but looking at instead of focusing on that getting fixated on what something needs to look like because it looks like that in a book or uh that 13 year old boy in India at the beginning of yoga when it first started did that so you know like is that even appropriate anyway for us in this day and age that's another question in itself but <laughs> but thinking about they do have benefits and so looking at what you want to achieve with your practice so if you want to calm if you want to energize if you want to work on a certain body part your knee or whatever um looking at the benefits of the pose and then putting that on the chair so the benefits and the feel of what it feels like instead of what it looks like going with that is um it, it is challenging to get your head around at the beginning because we are programmed into a certain thinking about yoga and uh it's what we a fed in a way and program to think of when we think of yoga and um yeah it goes deeper than that what about someone who's um got who's like a paraplegic or uh whatever like situation someone might be in at, who's to say they can't practice yoga if they don't move their arms or legs or if they can practice yoga still without there's a lot of ways you mentioned before visualization um that that's um so powerful and you know there's studies there's so many studies proving a lot of things about yoga uh when it comes to nearly every situation which uh that it's beneficial for most situations which is really amazing but um but yeah like why should they be denied practicing yoga you know just because they don't do a shape that's been prescribed by someone else they, yeah 
what about the breath? What about meditation? You know, that's all part of it as well. Mm. Yeah. And I just, I love that idea of making something I'm sure you've had this people come to say mat yoga classes and be like, I'm not very good at yoga or I can't do yoga. I can't touch my toes. Um, That having something that is super accessible for them that like, you know, and I always say that like, you know, yoga is not about, it's one of my favorite um, yoga quotes is that, you know, yoga is not about touching your toes. It's what you learn on the way down. Um, You know, and it's like, it's okay if you can't, but chair yoga really does take all of that away from it because it, it's never about like stretching too far for something or just being like oh like reach for something it's all about just being where you are and adding on things as you go and and being adaptable to change that yeah like if you want to lift an arm or you don't today it is really invitational and accessible as well so yeah and it comes down to like the way we speak and uh, because we really focus on using language that is um invitational that's trauma-informed that's like um and thoughtful and kind as well and that also and, and also about giving the choice back to the the students that are there about where they need to be um but also if you're if the goal like i mean i guess a lot of people come to yoga for healing of something. And if you are in a pose or you're moving really fast through everything um, without time to feel, without time to experience anything, to reflect, to let it even integrate into your system, how are you going to heal? and, And if you're in a pose where you're feeling really stressed, I hear that a lot. Yoga stresses me out. <laughs> and, um, yeah. and I think most people will probably originally come to yoga to calm down, but then they get there and it's like, I can't breathe properly. I'm like heated up. I'm, you know, and most people already have a lot of heat because they live in a highly stressful um, go, go, go world, although it has slowed a bit probably with, with um, COVID, maybe for the better in that way. But, mm. but like, it's um, most people have a lot of heat anyway, so they don't necessarily need more so I'm not saying every situation but but yeah like if we're adding to that um stress and we're in a position and we're trying to push 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 and reach 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 and more 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 like how is that really going to allow people that space and to feel there's it's just not there and to sorry to heal like it, it's just not not there <laughs> so yeah it's um it's interesting there's a lot of that still in our society about needing to strive and to, to push and to reach. And how about we just be, can't we just be for a moment? (laughs) You know, Yeah, that idea of being really busy and even like squeezing in a yoga class to in between things. Cause you know, there's just so much going on. So yeah, like you just said earlier that hopefully things have, you know, that's one positive, I guess I've tried to take out of, you know, Mm. everything kind of closing down and shutting down and, uh, is that we just have to be in this time you know there's nowhere there's no rush in anything right now uh yeah yeah I have found that that um it's interesting like I feel really busy at the moment <laughs> but um but also Sydney is different too because we haven't um had as much of the lockdown and yeah. I remember at the beginning thinking oh we could do with a little bit longer in this situation because although saying that to people from Melbourne now probably does like <laughs> you know um, they won't won't like it but um and I totally get that because that that was a, a long time that you guys have been in lockdown but um but yeah at the beginning I thought probably as a whole we could do with like more time just to let everyone have the opportunity because once that um slowing down happens sometimes people are really uncomfortable at the beginning mm. and it just takes a little time to get get like okay i can deal with this and then figure it out but by the time i think we all went back maybe not everyone had enough time to and many people probably went back into their lives like just snap back in um you know if it everyone's journey is different so you know but yeah it's like that slowing down was really nice not rushing around to all classes and um like today I was just thinking because I was teaching from home online and if I had to go and drive somewhere today when I had a lot of stuff to do um 
behind the scenes like admin stuff and and need a few deadlines and so just not having that pressure of going and driving to classes was just such a relief today so there's definitely some benefits to how we're adapting some of the things we're doing yeah and even that you've been able to train people online and overseas and yeah 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 we were lucky we had the one-on-one training already in place but we also created the virtual classroom because we obviously had to cancel yeah. some of the face-to-face trainings and I wanted to give people a way of still doing it together as a group so so that's something that will stay on our um our schedule now because it, it does make it even more accessible as well because people from areas that um that may want to still study in a group can come and do that that if they can't get to the face-to-face trainings yeah venues so yeah it's almost the same we just don't have actual hugs we have virtual hugs instead (laughs) But everything else is pretty much the same. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. So we're very lucky to have this technology. Like we, you know, we're chatting on Zoom right now. Yeah, it feels like we've known each other forever, but we've really only met through computers. So. I know. Isn't it weird? It's like, you know, and you can, I was speaking to someone earlier how, you know, like that adapting to video and, you know, online calling has been difficult in some situations, but I was thinking of this, I was like, oh, this has been really cool. Like, <laughs> yeah, And it's amazing how like the, the connections can still be so strong and um, the presence of people and the energy you can feel. And it, it's, yeah, it's amazing how that actually travels far and wide without even needing to be in the same room as someone, you know? Yeah. It's, it's really, um, it's awesome, yeah. Now, you touched on very quickly before about language and how, as chair yoga teachers, um, you especially like to be mindful and kind and loving with the words. Um, That's something that, yeah, I guess probably in the last sort of 12 months of of things that I've learned, I've really picked up on and tried to change the way because I know that there was definitely some things that I used to say and now I'm like, oh. Um, yeah. Me too. Sometimes um, they still pop out every now and yes. then. I go, <laughs> no, put that back in. But yeah, get that, back in there. <laughs> also, you know, a good sign of of changing and adapting to things and um and learning. But why is the language so important um in chair yoga or just in yoga in general? Why do you think? Not even just in, in yoga. It's actually all the time because every single thing that we like we're talking about the affirmations before everything has energy behind it so any word that we say any thought that we think it's energy and if we think about what we call matrika shakti which is the power of the word um every single thing we're doing is having an effect so we need to really be careful about the words that we choose to say to ourselves and to others and i feel when people are teaching and i know that i've been completely unaware of this too because i had never learned that before really doing this course um about how how to speak kind like to teach kindly really and empowering instead of disempowering people because the language that we're using in classes can be really detrimental to people's health um, if we're using things like um, if you uh, if you if you can't do that do this if you need to do less then you can do this like it's sort of like saying to someone that you are less than or you're not good enough so you may as well do that option um, because yeah it's um it's kind of expected that you should do that other thing you know and I think sublim I think we have sort of and I know I've been in this place. Um, that that sort of language is just normal to us and we don't even recognize the effect that it's having on us and like we ac- we actually accept that for ourselves and we it's in because it's part of our it's part of our own language as well in a way about us not feeling good inside or whatever it is that we're dealing with and um yeah, it, bec- it actually is accepted when it shouldn't be, <laughs> you know. We shouldn't really be accepting anyone telling us that we're less than, even if they're unintentionally doing it um, <laughs> that or anything like that. We, should, we, we never should really accept that for ourselves. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it's really important as teachers to be careful because we have such a responsibility to to 
help these individuals that come to us for, like I said, a lot of people come for healing, a lot of people come for help of some sort. That's why they're coming to you. And we need to take that seriously. And part of that is, is speaking, always being conscious of what we're saying and how we're saying it. So we can help empower people instead of disempower them. Mm. Yeah. And I think it's, it's, it's very powerful to be a yoga teacher or yoga facilitator and, you know, a real privilege to be able to, you know, hold space for people and, and yeah, you want to speak to them in a kind way. And I, you know, I don't want my classes to be like a boot camp, and that's, you know, that's something I've always just like really disagreed with is just, you know, that's what I, I think why I'm so drawn to yoga because it's not a place of, of punishment and you know, destroying yourself because you should feel bad about your body for whatever reason. It's a place where you should be accepted no matter who you are, what you do, what you look like. Yes. There's a quote I heard the other day. It's like, um, go to the places, the people and places where you can exhale or something like that. I can't remember exactly how it was. I posted it off, I think, but I'll have to go back and look at it. But I just felt like that is what we need to create as teachers is that place where people can breathe out and feel safe because they won't be able to breathe out if they don't feel safe. So it's like we need to um, create that space. But if we're not being kind, uh, thinking about, you know, ahimsa, the first yama, right, non-violence, non-harm, so if we're causing harm to anybody, we're not practicing yoga. Mm. And, um, you know, it's, it, unfortunately it is still very present in many yoga classes about, um, you know, the, the way of breaking people down to build them up, the, the punishment, like you said, the yeah. yelling at people, the, and even inadvertently because people aren't aware or haven't learned how to, offer options or haven't but if you're not offering options if you're not speaking kindly if you're not um you're not making your class accessible you're excluding people from your classes and you're not practicing kindness because kindness involves well to me involves being including everyone not making anyone feel left out or less than you've just reminded me um on my yoga teacher training as well because obviously it was an intensive so it was you know, just that 26, 28 days, whatever it was, was obviously quite intense regardless of what we were doing. But I think uh, there was, you know, there was a couple, I guess there's a couple of things, you know, when you learn over time, but there was one instance where I was like, I, I appreciate what they're trying to do to us right now, but I would never, ever do this to anyone in a class. So um, it was in our morning practice and we were in goddess pose and I think we held, they made us hold it for like 14 minutes. I would die. Yeah, it was horrible. <laughs> and I, like already that shape, it doesn't like my hips are quite internally rotated. And so it's not like a fun shape for me to be in regardless. And yeah, I, I appreciated that they were like, you know, like once you sit through the pain and once you kind of sit through the uncomfortableness of like, that's when you'll grow. And I, I understand because, you know, in life when you go through really painful times and you go through really uncomfortable times, that's when the growth comes. But I was like, I just feel like there's another way we could do this. <laughs> like, <Yeah. laughs> because, and it was well, like in a group setting, I was like, oh, what if I stand up and want to shake out my legs? Or, you know, if I want to come out of this, am I going to be seen as... Yeah. And then it kind of came down to, I guess, you know, a bit of my ego in a way of being like, oh, well, I've got to stay here because otherwise what are they going to think of me? Um, but that's a, if that's a lot of people's experience in classes um, and that's why injuries occur as yeah. well in classes, not even just physical injuries but trauma injuries from yoga because tr like mental, emotional trauma can happen in those situations. Mm. I think that's a great exercise. I mean, it can be effective and, um, you know, you said there's a point to it, you know, um, but like give people the option to come out if they need regardless and without judgment because what if someone is injuring like you know their hips are not meant to be in that shape for that long and that could cause someone damage or yeah. whatever like it just it having that opportunity to just still choose for yourself is really important so and um holding having that space where people feel comfortable to do that 
Yeah. Yeah, because people will not want to speak. It's like with adjustments as well. Um, yeah. I know I've been in a class where someone has come along in Shavasana and pressed on my boobs and it was really painful and really uh, like inappropriate. <laughs> and, you know, um, and for me, like I didn't feel like in that class that I could say anything because the, the cult like uh, um, space that I was in, <laughs> it's <Yeah. laughs> like no one would ever speak up, you know? So like that's not right either because that is actually um i mean yeah that's like intrusive right so yeah <laughs> and and um especially in shavasana when someone's lying down and you come over the top of them and press yeah. down to the boobs like that what is that you know imagine if i'd had a even but i mean it was traumatic even for me without having a past experience but if mm-hmm. someone had had a past experience with um, something like that yeah yeah well, we I know, don't know that sometimes. I know even, um, you know, some, for some people, like if you're teaching in a, in a very trauma sensitive um, class that, yeah, like a Shavasana. And so I guess that's why chair yoga, you know, would be great for situations like that because for someone lying on their back and their eyes closed is a very uncomfortable situation. And it's like, you know, for me, I'm like, I love it. I love the end of the class or I just, you know, I love lying down, closing my eyes and feeling myself on the you know on the floor but that's not for everyone either and so i kind of love that that's a you know that chair yoga offers that option as well it's like you can be seated you don't have to have your eyes closed um like you can see where you are um i guess you're not you know you're not on the ground you're still quite you're at you're at the same level as everyone else um yeah yeah Yeah, and that's another beautiful thing about teaching the whole class seated is that everyone is at the same level all the time like as in not as in uh levels as in higher lower whatever but there's like there's no hierarchy (laughs) yeah no there's no hierarchy like there's uh, you know, even if people stand up and some do and some don't, that can also make people feel a little bit inadequate or a little bit like they're not um, doing what other people want. But if someone was to have trauma and a person next to them stood up, that could be scary for them. You know, that could be a trigger or uh, especially for someone behind them or, you know, so if they know that everyone's seated, that can also be um, quite helpful for working with trauma. Mm-hmm. And um, there's not as much moving around, which is as in like um, the teacher, I guess, is more usually at the front, sometimes might move around depending on the situation, but but um, yeah. they can see you at all times and things, things like that that just really help in that situation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But now, um, could sit here and talk to you forever, which I, I know, know. <laughs> um, we've um, done before, um, but we will start wrapping it up just for our, you know, for the listeners, um, ears so they don't have to hear us jabber on all day. Uh, um, <laughs> but, um, what's, you know, what's a couple of tips if someone's, you know, they might just be a, a vinyasa teacher or a hatha teacher or something, and they might be looking at ways to maybe include some more sort of invitational language. Like what are some tips that you could maybe give? What would you suggest to yoga teachers on ways to make their classes, uh, no matter what classes they might be, a bit more invitational and accessible? Uh, I would definitely say watch your Matrika Shakti. <laughs> but, um, and um, if you can teach instead of teaching regressively, like, uh, you know, here's the shape. If you can't do that, then you can do this. If you need to modify, do this. Uh, first of all, it's dangerous for people maybe causing injuries and things that aren't, don't need to go into that shape for their bodies, but also that it makes people feel like they're going backwards. So I'd say always teach progressively mm. instead of regressively. Uh, so, and, set the foundation up people miss over the foundation and go for the big pose and foundation is where stability comes from so starting there can make people feel safe immediately and then growing instead of um going backwards uh and thinking about uh, using language that is more invitational less commanding so instead of saying things like i want you to do this I invite you to, or maybe you'd like to, you might like to, how about this or maybe this? And not even labeling anything as like fullest expression. I hate that phrase. I think we might have talked about this in our training. <laughs> there is no such thing because everybody is going to be in their own shape 
in their own way and that is their own unique expression so uh even thing calling things um full plank or modified plank can you know that might even have i mean both of them are a plank so do you even need to call it i mean you can call it plank <laughs> yeah know? like hopping you know your version of plank however you want to word it but exactly. just um yeah getting away from the idea that's that just doing that final shape that's in a book is that pose and anything under that is not the pose right like every every layer of that is still the pose people might just move one finger and that could be a pose for them that could be the pose for them so just yeah getting away from labeling things is really important and um yeah that that's a way to help avoid um people feeling judged or or anything like that and feeling more included and and um practice and learn ways that you can um be have everyone in your class at the same time do more training if you need to find you know um yeah um go within and 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 imagine you had some challenge in your body what would you do mm. you know things like that yeah well speaking of doing more training where can people find out more about your training um and where they can do it um so we've just finished our last virtual classroom but we will be doing some more next year so the group training is um just finishing up for the year but you can still do the one-on-one -on -one training anytime from anywhere um and we'll be setting up our face-to-face -face locations soon because i feel that we're going to be able to travel again soon <laughs> So the best way to uh, find out is to go to the website, which is um, getfitwhereyousit.com.au and you can go to the teacher training tab and that will have all the information about the dates and everything like that on there and also um, what the course is about. Cool. And can people do, um, I know there is a Facebook group of, uh, or you've got a Facebook page. So where can people maybe, you know, if they've never done chair yoga before and want to maybe look online for some videos, have you got some? Yeah. So there's a, I've got a Facebook page and also a group as well. And in the group I'm doing classes uh, twice a week. So it's a great place to go uh, as a resource for teachers, but also as um, members just to enjoy the classes. So uh, that is LV Chair Yoga Australia group on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> I'll make sure yeah. I put the links to um to that in the in the notes. Yeah, I'd love to away. remember. <laughs> LVCYAU is the abbreviated all the first letters. Okay. Um, you want to find on Instagram or Facebook, but but yeah, that's um that's a good way to to get a bit of an idea uh, for free if <laughs> you know um to come and join and there's a class on zoom as well which um you can pop the link in if you want it's yeah, going awesome. at least the end of the year and hopefully we'll keep that going next year when things go back into um venues again but uh yeah it's a free class as well so it's a good place to try it out try before you buy <laughs> love a bit of that um <laughs> <laughs> it's great because uh, it's um accessible as well in that way that uh there's something there that people don't have to pay for when a lot of people are going through financial challenges at the moment so it's really nice to have that option yeah well it's great that you offer that option because yeah it is one of those things i guess that can be a, a bit of a holding back for some people so yeah so thank you for offering that to the community yeah yeah it's great it's really good yeah uh well thank you so much for joining me today it was great to finally have you on and um chat away uh as as always um but yeah we'll pop all the notes and whatnot in the show notes below um but thank you so much claire thank you so much for having me the time just went so fast so <laughs> no idea what we talked about but i'm sure it was great <laughs> <laughs> thank you for tuning in to another episode of the plant powered yoga podcast thank you for your patience over the last couple of weeks as there's been a bit of a delay getting some episodes out um i've moved back to melbourne which i'm super excited to be back here uh, you might even hear a few tinkling bells in the background got a few cats here with me which i'm also very happy about the next episode will be a little chat about things that happen in yoga classes that 
grind my gears a little bit and things that I wish were maybe a little bit different and it did sort of stem from this uh, chat with Claire about uh, the inaccessibility that happens in some yoga classes. Have a great start to your new year and here's to a happier and healthier, fingers crossed, 2021. I'd like to acknowledge the Tharawal people, the traditional custodians of the land of the UN nation of which this podcast was recorded and pay my respects to elders past and present. Thanks again for listening to the Plant Powered Yoga podcast. For more information, visit plantpoweredyoga.com or visit the show notes below. I'd love it if you could rate, review or even share this podcast with a friend. Thanks so much for helping create a kinder world and see you next time.